Hey Pop Tropicans, it's Captain Crawfish. Today I'm going to help you play through one of our featured islands of the month for November, Shrink Ray Island. This is a classic and it's a little bit difficult, so stick with me and I'll show you everything you need to know to play through and get your Shrink Ray Island medallion. Let's get started. Here we are on Main Street, right outside of a school, where the science fair is being held tonight. We go into the school, take into a hallway, run down the hallway, and then enter the door to the gym where the science fair is being held. There are several kids here with their projects. You're welcome to click and interact. Each one of those projects actually does something when you click on it. They're all just for fun. What we're actually looking for is down here at the end where one is missing. And there are three adults standing next to this blank project. It seems that CJ, the girl who has won the science project a few years running, is nowhere to be found. So we'll talk to her parents and see if they have some idea about where she might be. They're not sure either, but they do what any responsible parent would do in this situation and ask a total stranger wearing trash on his head to go to their apartment and look for CJ. So having had this conversation, we're gonna head right back out of the gym, back down this hallway where the water fountain is interactive, you know, and uh, back out onto Main Street. From here, go to the right. We're gonna go to Avenue A, where CJ's parents said they live. It's in this apartment building here with this cat. Now, you'll see that I'm going to follow the cat around the apartment here, all the way to the kitchen, then back to the bathroom. I'll let you in on the secret game design reason for this. It's that we wanted to make sure that, as a player, you saw every room of the apartment in its entirety so that when you are shrunk and playing with much less to see, you at least had this mental map in your head of how the apartment was laid out. Uh, so having gone into the bathroom and back out, cat's gone, head over to CJ's bedroom here. Again, we're looking for things we can interact with. The thing we're looking for in particular is her microscope on her desk. Her invention's been stolen. Trust no one. Find all the information in the house. That sounds pretty intriguing, and here comes some masked figure who appears to have taken the shrink ray gun. And we're about to see that, yes, it works. All right, so we've been shrunk. The room is now much, much larger. It's time to start exploring. We'll go right past this boyish looking shark-like figure uh, and just jump around CJ's room and see what we can see. Shrink Ray, even more so than most Pop Tropica Islands, is designed so that you can do things in a lot of different orders. You don't have to do everything in a particular order. There are only a few things. So I'll, I'll kind of do things as I go along, and, and some won't come into play for a while. So here I'm jumping on the fan to lower it, and now I'll jump on the plug next to it and press the button. Blows away the dust here, and now I can pick up that item underneath. <laughs> Careful of that happening. There's my thumb drive, there's Dr. Hare, whose name I can legally use. While I'm here, again, not necessary to do this now, but I'll need to do it eventually, so I'll just push over the trash, which spills and lands on the ground there. That will change with some of the other things we do later. Similarly, here I'm going to jump to the top of the bookshelf and do something that won't come into play until nearly the end of the island, but as long as I'm here, I may as well do it. I'll push this copy of Tess's Tree by Jess M. Brailier, a great American, to the floor. It'll form a ramp, but I don't need a ramp right now, so we'll keep going. Another thing I'll show you here is that if I jump on this lamp a few times, it lowers to the desk. And those of you who have played Shrink Ray know that I'm accidentally overlooking something with the thermostat right now. Again, don't have to do everything in the same order. And there's CJ's locked diary, her password-protected computer, and that's it for her room. Head to the living room. And get, there's that cat again. No, the cat doesn't come into play again. That's it. He's just going to annoy you for the rest of the adventure. Um, some things I can't do here. Actually, not much to do in this room yet. Go into the bathroom and show you a few things. Um, this is a puzzle that I like. It may be a little difficult. But when you come into the bathroom, the lights and the ventilation fan are both on. You can turn the light on or off, it doesn't really matter as far as our concern here, but you have to turn the fan off and then turn on the hot water on the sink, which is the red left 
nozzle there. And that makes this little code appear. This is just a reference for you to know later that certain letters can be replaced by numbers. Why would we want to do that? Well, we'll find out, but first we have to get to the other side of the bathroom. So jump onto the hair dryer, move to the right to tilt it, and that red button is the one that turns it on. Once it's set up, you just ride the current to the other side. So now we're in the bathtub. First thing is push this soap off. And the second is climb up here to turn the water on and fill up the tub. Every time you come back after doing this, the soap will still be on the soap dish, but the bathtub will be full. So it'll be a little bit faster the next time we come in here. Uh, we'll always have to do this part though, and all I'm doing here is swimming against the bar of soap to push it over to the left part of the tub. Once you get the exact positioning right, it's not too hard, but it can be a little bit tricky. Out of the tub on this side, there is a very interesting magazine article. It's about how to crack a password, and this is where those number substitutions for letters will come in handy. That's going to help us crack CJ's password when the time comes. For now, there's not much else we can do in this bathroom, which is in dire need of a cleaning. Uh, so I'll just head back out. It's a lot easier to get out of this side of the bathroom than it was to get in. Just make your way over to the right of the tub, climb up, and head out to the right. Same deal here, just run straight through, go back out into the living room, and into the one room we have not yet visited, the kitchen, which is directly to the right of here. Again, lots of different things we can do. I'm going to try to do as much as I can as I go. The first thing is jump up onto that junk drawer and pick up the screwdriver. Show you what to do with that in a little bit. Continue pushing this sponge over. And now uh, there's a bit of a tricky jump to make here. You need to jump into that trash can from the top of the spray bottle. It's not easy. You just need to make it a bit more of a horizontal jump than you're used to. Here we have uh, a bit of a maze. There are a lot of things that will block your path. When you click on them, you'll see arrows appear to the right or the left. Click on the arrow and your character will either push or pull the object and that will open up a path or actually maybe block off a path or if you're really unlucky it might squish you to death. So I'm going to show you, don't worry, you can restart right away when that happens. I'll show you how to get through it. There's, there's two objectives when you're in this trash can. One is that you need to find a scrap piece of paper. The other is that you need to get out. It's entirely possible that you might go through the maze and exit not having gotten the scrap piece of paper that you're looking for. And if I had to guess, I would bet that's one of the, the main frustration points for players who are struggling to get through Shrink Ray Island. So stick with me. I'm going to show you what to do. The paper is going to be in the upper right hand corner of this scene. So I'm just about there. Once I pull this out, you'll see this little staircase open up. I should probably should have pushed that, left that where it was. Uh, but either way, there's my scrap paper up there. Looks like a, a torn piece of a page that, that might be completed elsewhere, so we'll remember that for later. Much easier to get out than it was to find that piece of paper. Push this guy to the right. This family really likes tuna, or maybe that's for the cat. Again, we make a little staircase here. Do the same thing here. And that's it. We're done in the trash can. Back out into the kitchen. The kitchen is also split up into two scenes. Heading over to the right. A couple more things we can do here that I am sparing you the agony of having to figure out. You'll see that I can't jump up to that table, nor can I push that uh, food bowl for the cat there. So, I need to get up higher to try to make a path that I can push that food bowl. This is a, a kind of long string of things to do. I can't push the tea kettle directly, but I can push this roller, which will knock the tea kettle over onto a hot burner, which causes the steam. And if you remember what the hair dryer did in the bathroom, you'll know that the steam here is probably going to take us up to this shelf. There's the olive oil in a cruet. Push it over, it starts dripping, and it makes a slippery path on the floor. Now that the floor is slippery, I can push this bowl. I'm going to push it over directly under the bag of cat food. Now when I jump on the cat food, the, it comes uh, 
pouring out. I'll do it a couple times just to be safe. Maybe three times. Should do it. I'm trying to make a pile of food high enough to stand on so that I can jump onto the table. Push this back. That cereal box is what I need to get past. That is the, the barrier that is unforgiving to a pop trafficking. Head on up here. There's actually two things I want from this table. One is what appears to be a blank piece of paper. The other is this grape. Unlike a lot of items in Pop Tropica that show up on cards and are added to your inventory, the grape is something that you'll actually hold in your hands while you walk. So carry it all the way over here and head to the left. I have to put it down for a second, then click to pick that up, bring it to the outlet, pick the grape back up. When you are holding the grape, and only when you are holding the grape, you are heavy enough to push down the arm of the toaster. Then let go of it, and when the toaster pops, up you go. Here we're going to do a bit of a, a slingshot approach to get over on top of the fridge. Push the shaker of salt on that side, then jump onto the edge of the spatula. Uh, the trick here, which I just did wrong, and again, I'll... I'll just jump right back up here. Uh, is that if you try to control your character in the air after the spatula launches you, you actually won't make the distance. So my advice to you is jump onto the spatula and remove your hands. Back away. The physics know what to do. They will guide you. Now we've got the remote control and it's time to go back into the living room. All right, now we can do a few things in this room. With the screwdriver, we will open up the battery pack on the remote control car. So open up the inventory and use the screwdriver. Once you do that, you can click to pick up the battery. Then simply jump up onto the coffee table and put the battery into the remote control. Alright, and now just jump onto the green button to turn on the TV. Helps if you land on it. Once the TV's on, if you climb up the antenna, your character's body will become electrically charged. Then jump into the balloon, and it will take you in the direction that you jumped from. So you can access this shelf. Push a little fish food into the tank, and turn off the fan. Now the fish swim up to the top. The fan being off lets you swim to the bottom. And by clicking on the treasure chest, you'll get the key to CJ's diary. And I know that you remember where that is. And that cat won't get me again. All right, here in CJ's room, I'm going to use the key to open the diary. Once again, as simple as using it from the inventory. And there's the other half of that torn page we got out of the trash earlier. So we'll use that, and it gives us a secret message. This message, when we click on the diary to read it, tells us about invisible ink. And we did have a blank piece of paper that smelled like lemon juice. So. If you lower and turn on this lamp, if you haven't done it already, do it now. And then use the blank paper. The message appears on the paper. Look for her in the telescope using the school coordinates. We don't know exactly what that means yet, but we will certainly find out. Now the thing I forgot to do earlier is to jump onto the thermostat. And by running, I can change the setting until that red light comes on. That means the heat's going to come on. If you remember, way back at the beginning of this video, I pushed over a trash can and a bunch of paper fell out. Now that the heat's on, the updraft is going to give me a platform to jump onto CJ's bed. Pick up the Morse code key, which is going to come in handy now, and continue to head over to the left, past this boyish, sharkish creature, and up on the bulletin board, PS 101, Public School 101, is located at the coordinates X87, Y16, by, again, jumping and running on these dials on the telescope, I can point it at the school. And you'll know if it's wrong if you click on the eyepiece to look through. You won't see anything until it's set correctly. So, is it 87.16 or 86.17? I never remember. I guess we'll find out. Because it's 8716, there you go. Alright, so that's CJ in the window, and she's flashing Morse code to us. Every time she makes a letter, there's some sequence of short and long flashes. A short flash is represented on the code key by a dot, 
and a long flash is represented by a dash. So simply look at what she's doing to signal, look for the appropriate letter, and then click on it. And you'll see that she is starting to spell out some kind of a message to you. Uh, I can sort of spare you the suspense and tell you what the code is, but it's also kind of neat to learn a little bit about how Morse code works. So I'm clicking along. Next one I know will be four dots. Next one is going to be one dot and one dash and so, forth, so on and so forth. Uh, so eventually it is going to say flush the thumb only we had some way of knowing what the next word was going to be without waiting for CJ to spell it out. Well, you never know. Someday you might need to know Morse code in your life, and I would love to know if somebody has a tale of messaging SOS in Morse code because they remembered the letters from Pop Tropica. Let me know if you do. Alright, time to go flush the thumb drive. And here's... <laughs> I love that sound. Uh, here's where I'm going to give you... Okay, okay, well that time it wasn't funny because I really have something I have to go do. I'm going to give you one of the most important tips you're going to get about playing Shrink Ray Island, which is don't go straight to the bathroom. I'm going to show you what happens if you go straight to the bathroom right now. I'm going to jump up onto the bowl and I'm going to attempt to do exactly what CJ just said. Flush the thumb drive, but oh! I should back it up. Now you'd have to go all the way back here again through the magic of video editing. I'm going to go here and enter CJ's password. It's M4R13 space CUR13. It's Mary Curie replacing those three letters with numbers. You could have figured it out for yourself by seeing her hero, the password notes all around, but I'm here to help you. I'm here to get you that medallion. So type in M4R13 space CUR13. And then, after reading that, you will automatically upload the data to the computer. And now you can go flush the thumb drive. You're welcome. So much more satisfying when you can just plop this right into the bowl. And then to flush, jump up onto the thing. I guess you have to stand right there to do it. Now to flush it. That's the ticket. Now somebody's in the apartment. They're looking for the thumb drive. Only too late. Now I should get back to the telescope and see if CJ has any other messages for me. So here I am, uh, once again, unable to remember if it's x87y16 or vice versa. I'm pretty sure it's 8716. All right, so now we have a new code. Once again, I'm going to input one letter at a time as CJ signals. Thief is... You know, Roger Ebert has a thing called the Law of Economy of Characters which states that the secret bad guy in any movie is the most recognizable supporting character who has not yet done anything. If you follow those rules, as we often do here at Pop Tropica, you won't be terribly surprised to see that the thief is Mr. Sil... Who could it be? Ah! Thief is Mr. Silla. And there he is! Alright, Pop Tropicans, it's hero time. We have to find a way now out of the apartment so we can get to the school. You remember I set up that ramp back at the beginning of the video? Now it's going to come into play. Also remember that there was a remote control car and a control for it that I haven't used yet. There's only one problem. The remote control car, we took the battery out. So avoid this cat. Cat's got nothing on us now. And we'll do the same thing we did the last time. Click on the battery from the remote, and then go down to the remote control car, put it in there. Now upon entering the car, I still need to click to make it drive. It controls in exactly the same way as walking does. So just put the cursor to the left and go. And if you have a little funkiness, 
getting out of the scene, that's okay, just keep going. Keep going until you almost get to the ramp, and then you are rewarded with this pretty cool little video. We're free. We're out on the street, literally. So we're going to race to the school to try to catch up to CJ before Mr. Silva can do anything bad to her. And uh, this is a little bit tricky, but you can't actually lose. So there are certain obstacles that will knock you back or drop you down. You'll, you'll just end up right back on the road like this. There are jumps and tunnels that you can go over and through. If you hit any water or any oil slicks, you'll spin out, but it's no big deal. And if you hit anything like a fire hydrant or a mailbox, you'll just bounce back for a second. Uh, so again, you can't really lose. You won't be... You're not being tracked for how long this takes you or anything. Just keep on driving and eventually you will get where you want to go. I think it took less time to walk this, but I guess it is a tiny remote control car after all. I think we're just about there though. This little scene automatically plays once again, and we have control of the game again, back inside Mr. Silva's office. And here, for the first time, we finally get to meet CJ. We'll have a conversation with her, where she explains that what we've already pieced together, her teacher has stole her shrink ray gun. But she doesn't know why, because he's such a good teacher. And, uh, if a character says we need to make sure that the bad guy doesn't see us, you can bet that the first thing that's going to happen is that the bad guy sees you. And that takes us to the final sequence of the game. We're going to have to try to outwit Mr. Silva and his shrink ray gun. So here, the shrink ray gun will pop into the screen every once in a while. And as long as you're standing behind one of these objects, you'll be okay. The ray will hit the object and it will shrink. That also means that you can only use each one of those one time each. So we'll try to do this economically. Once we get to the globe, you actually want to stop and wait here a minute, because this will help us finish this sequence. Push the globe down to the floor and push it over to the right. So you, oh, hide. All right, we'll use it as a platform to jump to that chair and then up onto Mr. Silva's desk. The last thing is to hide behind this mirror. Will the mirror shrink? No! It'll shrink Mr. Silva instead. Now he's trapped in an ant farm. So we've taken care of the bad guy, which is great, but there's still one problem, which is that all three of us now are teeny tiny. The shrink ray gun has a little switch, conveniently enough, that I can change to grow. And upon doing that, here we go. Back to normal size. Look who saved the day. And CJ has a new science project, the Incredible Shrunken Man. I've got my island medallion, as promised. That is how you get through Shrink Ray Island. Again, you'll get bonus credits for completing this island in the month of November. So head on over to poptropica.com right now to do so. Thanks a lot for playing, and thanks for watching this video.